was that closings happen every day right are gonna happen every day have happened every day for your entire life will happen every day for the rest of your life regardless of market conditions and i mean by the truck load the biggest thing when i watch your videos is really just when I look at your coaching is your marketing. That's like the diving into your marketing and the coaching on how to get started. There's a lot of agents that are trying to revamp what they're doing to get more leads and to get more buyers and sellers. It's a little harder, I don't know if up in the panhandle and the, the Alabama, uh, Florida line is having the same inventory issue, but mm -hmm. getting customers right now is a problem when there is no house to sell them and the mm -hmm. marketing in this type of market. Got you. Um, yes, we are having the same inventory issues. Um, we've got the same inventory issues uh, around the country. It's the same problem everywhere. Um, and so um, what you have to do is change your perspective on what you're looking at when you look at the market. Because if you're looking at the market and you're thinking, okay, there's no homes to sell, and you're thinking, you know, if you have a buyer, there's really it's really hard to find them what they're looking for, or you know they're competing against other buyers, or whatever the case may be. What you're doing is you're putting yourself in a very you're putting yourself in a box, okay? Which is it's 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 reality. Your perception is your reality. So if this is the way you look at it, that's your world, okay? But you can look at things completely differently, okay? Um, so there's a couple things. There's the there's a long-term outlook, and there's a short-term outlook. Okay, um, and they both go hand in hand. Okay, so when I look at a market, okay, when I look at just a real estate market, and I'm thinking about market share, and I'm thinking about okay, you know, this many transactions happen, and this agent did that much percentage of those transactions this year. Okay, to me, that's not really market share. That was that was market share of closings that year. But to me, market share overall for a real estate agent is how many people in your market that you have a relationship with, right? Um, the agents that are putting themselves in a box that that this is a restrictive market they're the ones not getting the deals because in their mind they're thinking that this is a restrictive market when in fact if you look at your market there's more there's more closings this year than last year so it's a better market than last year that's just that's facts right if in fact you look in your MLS and you see a higher number of transactions this year than last year you can't sit here and tell me that the excuse of why you're not selling is because of the market or inventory or buyers or whatever because that's an excuse that you're telling yourself right and when in reality there's more closings happening so am I speaking truth here so the first thing you have to do, the first thing you have to do is you have to change your perspective about the market. Because this is what this is the this is the problem that we kind of run into is we start to kind of categorize the market in our own mind and then we and then we start to believe this categorization and then we slowly start to let ourselves use it as an excuse and a crutch of why we're not producing when in fact the market is as good as it's probably ever been right now today agents that are saying it's tough right now because there's no inventory all right but they have a lot of buyers when inventory goes up okay those same agents are going to be complaining about inventory being up and that they don't have any buyers for all this inventory Right? When in fact, next year, probably gonna yield even more closings than this year, okay? Probably, you know, who knows what's gonna happen, um, but, but that's what you're gonna see. The ones that are complaining now about lack of inventory are gonna be complaining about the surplus of inventory next year, the same ones. And the same ones are gonna be using that as a crutch not to sell properties, right? And saying, oh, well, I would be selling a bunch, but there's just too much inventory. Right? Or this year, they're like, I wish I could sell some stuff, but there's just nothing to sell. It's gonna be the same old song and dance until you decide that you wanna change your perspective 
on this on the industry itself and say, you know what, I'm not going to fall follow the crowd here. I'm not going to look at the business like that, right? There's always an opportunity. Was that closings happen every day? right are gonna happen every day have happened every day for your entire life will happen every day for the rest of your life regardless of market conditions and i mean by the truck load closings even if the market retracted let's say 80 percent number of transactions in your market that 20 percent that's left is still a lot of closings happening every single day so what you got to understand is that all this blaming the market on this and that it has nothing to do with your overall success can it potentially fluctuate you at somewhat here or there yeah it could fluctuate you a little but it's never gonna it should never take you to zero it should never put you in a position where it's just like it's just so tough I've only sold two properties this summer never right unless you allow it to 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 do that to you unless you allow it to happen and then you start using it as a crutch see that's that gets dangerous when you start using the market as the excuse of why you're not succeeding at the level that you want to succeed at when in fact there's more closings this year than last year. So I'm not going to beat a dead horse with that, but um, that's something you guys really need to think about when you're looking at the market. Time to get to work. It's just an unlimited abyss. You'll never talk to every single property owner. There's an unlimited amount of loyal clients, okay? Loyal meaning never use another agent until the day they die. Okay, other than you, okay, that's what I mean by loyal. Yes, we're gonna have clients that, that go cheat on us, let's just say, or we're gonna you have, have clients who only wanna deal with listing agents or whatever, but there's an unlimited amount, okay? Listen to me, unlimited, meaning forever, never hit, the, never hit the end of that list, unlimited amount of loyal clients in your market for each and every one of you, Okay, the problem is the work that you have to put in to, to filter through the population to find them, most people don't wanna go through that. Now, NAR came out with a study. The number one reason why people chose a real estate agent was because they had a great reputation. They had a friend in the business with a great reputation. That was like 35%. Everything else was 1% or less, including what brokers they're with, including like there was like 15 other reasons. It was all 1% or less except for this one. Great friend in the business with great reputation. And if you ask a buyer or seller at the end of a deal, how'd you pick your agent? They're going to say they had a friend in the business. That's the number one reason by a long shot. And so what you have to do when you have to take that in and say, okay, my number one objective every day is to create as many friends in the market as humanly possible, not listing appointments and closings and showings and this, that, and the other. That's a byproduct of just doing your job. And your job is to talk to as many people as you can in your market every day to, to have great, great, for great first impressions with them, build a friendship with them, create a great connection with them. Okay. This is how it's done. People are like, how do we get listings? Well, an a, a seller has to to choose you to be their real estate agent. That's how you get a listing. And the only way a seller is gonna choose you to be their real estate agent is if you're friends with them and they know you and they, they trust you and they, they feel comfortable with you. When you're talking to people, your number one job is to make them feel comfortable with you, right? The only way to do that is by being comfortable with them. Right in these really awkward situations, you're talking to strangers about stuff and all that. If you can get to where you've done that enough, to where you broke through the barrier where you can feel comfortable in those awkward situations, then they're going to feel comfortable with you, and they're going to feel like this person has their stuff together. This person is confident. They, you know, they they are hard worker. They're honest, dependable. I like the way that they carry themselves. Um, but yeah, when you're moving to a different market, a different area, it's, it's all the same stuff. There's not like you you got to do whatever you have to do to get. In front of people, talking to them, creating those great first impressions, finding out how they're doing today, what they got going on, what you can do. You need to think of yourself as a politician, right? Think of yourself as a volunteer worker, okay? You're just doing community outreach to see what you can do to help people in the community with the, your, your services as a real estate agent. People need our help. When you look at MLS and all the closings, those are all through real estate agents. You know, those are all people that bought and sold through real estate agents. There's tons of them. People do not want to do the deals on their own. There's a small percentage of the market that want to do the deals on their own or try to avoid paying commission and all that. Small, small percentage. The majority understand that this is a, a they need a professional to help them through this process. Um, and they need a professional. It's not like they even, no, it's like they need it. It's like if you need a roofer, like they need, you know, my roof's leaking, I need a roofer now. It's like, I wanna sell my house, I need a real estate agent now, kind of thing, and so, 
when you're not reaching out and doing your job in terms of creating as many friends as you can in the market, you're letting everyone down. You're doing you're doing your community. You're doing all your your all the people out there a disservice because they're sitting around waiting on you to contact them to create that relationship to do business with you because you know that you're a great agent. You know that you're honest, dependable, professional, um, hard worker. You you've got everything it takes, and I mean you're you know that you're a good agent. But the problem is hardly anybody know that because you're not talking to anybody.